Hi, my name is Colin McNaughton. I'm a technical marketing manager for Ansible Automation Platform here at Red Hat. And today I wanted to talk about bridging the gap between observability and automation. So in this demonstration, we'll use Dynatrace to observe events happening within our application infrastructure. And then we'll also use Ansible Automation Platform along with event-driven Ansible. The event-driven Ansible controller is a, is a component of the Ansible Automation Platform, which is able to receive these events to from Dynatrace and kick off some automated remediation. Okay, so let's break down the components that we'll be using today. We're looking right now at Dynatrace, and this is my problems dashboard. If anything is observed within this environment that triggers some threshold, maybe a service outage, maybe high memory utilization across some application, right? This is where those problems will be surfaced. Now, what I want to do is take the payload from these problems and then automate a response based on the payload of that problem. And I can do this using event-driven Ansible. Now, event-driven Ansible, this is the controller that's running. We have these rule book activations that are constantly running within the back, in the background, waiting for these new events to process and, and trigger some automated response. So you see here, I have two different activations running. One is called storage monitor, and I've also tagged it as coming from Dynatrace, but you can see it's constantly just running in the background, waiting for things to occur. I also have automation controller stood up. Now this is, you know, the classic component of Ansible automation platform. This is where I've already defined a lot of my automation that takes place in this environment. Now, um, in this sort of scenario, my organization is having this storage related issue. It's kind of a known problem, it's temporary, but we do have a fix for it, right? So I have this automation job template down here called storage remediation. I want to run this in reaction to some problem payload being reported by Dynatrace. Now, I want to automatically remediate it, but I also want to know every time it happens. So as part of this workflow, I'm also opening up a ServiceNow incident so that I can populate that incident with facts from that, that problem occurrence, and I can come back and, and, and later investigate what it was that caused this specific incident. So let's take a look. Okay, we're back in Dynatrace. Looks like a brand new problem has been discovered within my environment, and it looks like it's that storage monitor issue. So let's go over to event-driven Ansible here. Let's take a look at my running rulebook activation. If I want, I can go into history and see the activation that's currently running. Now, the, the previous attempts were actually just me updating my project. Um, and so this is the current one running my latest version of my rulebook, and it looks like we've probably tracked some event information here. So let's go back to rule audit here. And this is where we can see all of the executions of these rules based on that payload coming from Dynatrace. So let's take a look at document and remediate storage monitor problem. My local time currently is 1019. So it looks like this one just executed at 1018. Let's take a look. Um, here I can see all the details for this successful execution. We see the successful status. We see the rulebook activation that it is related to, the time and fire date. Um, we also see the rule name, right? If I go into events, I can see exactly which event triggered this. So if I take a look at this event, I can see that a brand new problem has been open with a state of open. We see no process found for storage monitor, etc., etc. And this is all that payload coming from Dynatrace that we can reuse within our automation workflows. All right, so let's take a look at the actions that we took from this as a result of this. We take a look, we can see it ran a job template that corresponds to that job template we talked about earlier. And let's take a look at this. This should redirect us to the job that was executed in response to that event coming from Dynatrace. So that if I go down, I scroll down, I can see, I can take a look at the variables and see that this exact same payload from Dynatrace has now been injected into this job for automation controller. And that represents that integration between event-driven Ansible controller and automation controller. We can share that payload back and forth to inform our automated response. Now, the last step here is actually to take a look at ServiceNow. Let's see what happened if I refresh my incidents page. And there it looks like, well, I caught a previous execution in there too, but uh, it does look like a brand new incident was created. It has the incident, the problem ID, and it also has that same payload. Now this um, description could have also been 
mm, maybe we need to go out to this node. We can identify this node from our problem payload right here, node1.example.com. Why don't I go out and run some troubleshooting tests and drop the results of those tests within my incident? Maybe it's a Red Hat Enterprise Linux system. We run an SOS report and attach it directly to the incident. Point is, now we can get started with troubleshooting and reading through the data right away. Um, by now, if I go back to Dynatrace and if I refresh this page, everything should be gray again. Yep because we automatically remediated that problem and also serviced a brand new service now incident along the way so that we could inform um, inform the, the day shift that something occurred overnight that we need to investigate. Thank you very much for letting me show you how we can use event-driven Ansible to tie observability to automation. Thank you very much.